Big Blue will bring you the best in New York Jack Sports Talk Entertainment. Look at all these rumors around me every day. Just need some time, some time to get away. That's the Jim Harbaugh rumor starting up and rolling because he came out and said that he could be lured going out of college. He didn't say he was leaving. He said he could be lured. He could, he could, he could move on. We did a video about this two weeks ago. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and now everyone's jumping on this like, like, like they had an epiphany. All right, well, I had an epiphany two weeks ago, but that's all right. Is the New York Giants coach going to, I mean, is, 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 is the New York Giants going to be looking for a new coach? Will Jim Harbaugh be on that short list? Right now he lives, uh, I mean, he, he's, he's over in Michigan. He, he's kind of a, he's kind of, you know, he's, he's, he's the kind of guy that's got a kind of a West Coast feel, though. You know, with, with everything he did at Stanford, Stanford, excuse me. And, you know, coaching over there with the 49ers. Uh, is, it, is it interesting that he could be coming to the Giants? Sure. Why not? I've said it before. I said it on multiple broadcasts. I've said it on multiple things. We should just, I said it on the live stream. I said we should just, 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 just get a Brinks truck full, full of cash. Let me drive it over to his house and I'll dump it all into his driveway. And then he could turn around and decide whether he wants to be a giant or not. Is it crazy that this could potentially happen? Well, like the video says, the New York Giants right now are stuck between a nut job and a hard case. We all know who the nut job is. <laughs> we'll, and we'll talk about briefly the, the, the notion that you cannot have a head coach and a new general manager, that that doesn't work. That, that you, when, you stick to some, when you stick a general manager with a head coach, that fails. We'll talk about that briefly, but I mean, it's, it's a situation where I think there are better jobs available. I think I would be more interested in the Las Vegas Raiders job, new stadium. You got a quarterback, you're building something there. I may even, honestly, I may even be more interested in the Jacksonville Jaguars job. You got Khan, the owner who's, who's, who's willing to win. Does some stupid things, but he's willing to win. He's willing to put his money with his mouth. He's got a franchise quarterback. He's got an okay defense. You have some pieces in Jacksonville. In some ways, I think you have more pieces in Jacksonville than we have here in New York. You got the Bears job. Maybe potentially might be open. That's another. That could be another interesting issue. I've been thinking I would take that over the Giants job. You got the Minnesota job. So, I mean, and the same goes. You don't know what's going to go on with Seattle. You don't know what's going to go with Carolina. He's got, he's got a plethora of positions. That would be open to him that, in my mind, would be a hell of a lot more attractive than the Giants job. I mean, let's see, you know, you, you got to come in here. You, you got probably got to draft yourself quarterback. You got two first round picks, but you have to worry about the rookie cap pull. You have no cap space in 2023. So, you know, 2023 is going to be a wash. You got some overpriced priced free agents that aren't panning out. You got a dearth of talent throughout the roster. I mean, it's gonna be a total. It's gonna be a total rebuild, and that's and that's where I think we need to look at with this organization. It's gonna have to be a total rebuild. And is Jimmy is Jimmy Harbaugh willing to do that? I said it before. Back up the truck. Go for it. You know, see what happens. What's the you know what's the worst? The problem is you have to make a commitment. You have to make a decision. You have to say we are getting away from. We are getting ra- we're getting away from Crazy Joe, and we're going a different direction totally. You got to make that decision. That's the problem. And I don't know if the Giants are going to be willing to make that decision because it's all speculation at this point in time. Because if they don't make the decision and they keep them, then it's all it's all a moot point. And I think Harbaugh is going to want some some uh, some power in reference to player personnel decisions and more towards a general manager position. I think he's going to want he's going to want to have that after what happened with the 49ers. When we did this video a couple of weeks ago, we said he's probably going to need complete control. And I don't think Mara's ever going to be willing to give up that control. Now, like I said, if it was me, I, 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 would, I would punt Joe Judge out of the building right now. Wouldn't even wait. I would let Patrick Graham coach his first interim game and then fire him at the end of the season and just clean house. And just move on from there. But the question has always been... Is it a failing option to have a general manager come in and be told this is your head coach? Is it a failing option? If you look back at the annals of NFL history and just, just recently, you figure Jim Caldwell, who was the winningest coach in Lions history in the 21st century, 
lasted just two seasons with kind of what they refer to as an arranged marriage. You got uh, Chuck Pagano, you know, basically lasted a season and was forced out. You got Lovey Smith, who was um, NFL coach of the year and led the Bears to a Super Bowl, lasted just one season when he had kind of had that forced marriage. So, you know, there is, there is, a, there is a history of that failing. There really is. But, you know, if you go back with a smaller sample since 2014, there had been 15 times that new GMs inherited head coaches, and it's only been a 7-7 split. That only, at only seven times did it fail exponentially. So it's only a 50, 50, it's a, it's a 50, 50 proposition. And you look at it, you look at the, the ones that worked were like Andy Reed and Holmgren who both won Super Bowls after they fired their GM and brought in guys, Tom Coughlin, people forget won won two Super Bowls and he kind of, he stayed in place through a course he's in t- retirement and um, bringing in Jerry Reese. It also worked with Schottenheimer with the chargers and not, not to the extent that he won a Super Bowl, but Shanahan with the Broncos Titans with the Fishers, they both won a lot of games with GM changes. You know, if if you even go back to Ron Rivera, Ron Rivera survived two GM changes with the Panthers. That uh, I can't remember the I know it's I can't remember the one guy, but who uh, who got fired. But it was also Gettleman, of course, and I can't remember the other guy. Um, so you know, it's it's interesting that it's there. There is a dichotomy of it working. Now I don't think it worked with Joe Judge. I think Joe Judge is an idiot. But there's also some examples, and you know it's interesting if you look at the examples of the failures. You you have Mangini with the Browns, Jackson with the Browns, uh, Dave McGinnis with the Cardinals, Singletary Singletary with the 49ers, Rob Marinelli with the Lions, Shermer with the Packers, Riley with the Chargers, and uh, and and you take a look at that; those guys all fit more the Joe Judge pedigree. Those guys are more pedigree Joe Judge guys. Those guys that didn't even last the season or, or lasted one season with the, after the new GM came in. And those are names I think more are synonymous with Joe Judge. I don't think you want to have, I, I think that Andy Reid, uh, Mike Holmgren, Coughlin, Shanahan, Fisher, and Schottenheimer are much better names on the coaching carousel than you'll ever get with mighty Joe Judge. I think he fits more in the Fits more in the Mangini, Jackson, McGinnis, Singletary, Marinelli, Shermer, Riley, Pagano. Well, maybe not Chuck, not Chuck. But he kind of fits more into that. Um, he kind of fits more into that mold <laughs> in my mind. So there is a history in the league of it working. But I think you have to have the right go- guy. I think you have to have the right coach. I think you have to have the right general manager. You know, the one X factor, of course, is always going to be Kevin Abrams. You know, he's been with the he's been with the Giants for over 20 years. You know, he's he's probably has a strong relationship with Joe Judge. And he'll probably have the patience to handle Joe Judge for season three. But that would be the X factor. That would only be if the Giants went that direction. Do I think the Giants will go that direction? I don't know. I don't know whatsoever. I laugh because I also think of Jay Gruden out of Washington. He survived the GM change. He had uh, he was really close with Bruce Allen, but his uh, his six years produced only one uh, one playoff berth. So I mean, it's it's interesting if you take a look at it from a league perspective. And like I said, the league perspective is it has worked in the past. And if you go back just to fourteen, it's happened fourteen times, and it's a seven and seven split. Is that something that the Giants want to hang their hat on? I don't know. But it's just an interesting question. Isaiah Wilson, of course, was released by the Giants. What a shock. I love watching Twitter implode when we signed him. And I said that he was a piece of garbage. And I pointed out all of his legal issues. And I don't mean a piece of garbage as a person, but as a player. And I pointed out all of his legal issues and troubles and how he was probably never going to see the field. But everyone, this was the new reclamation project for the Giants. Giants are becoming the Knicks. Said it before, the Knicks used to always find these former first round draft choices, especially high level ones, and bring them in, Emmanuel Moutier, and say that Michael Beasley, that we're gonna turn them into better players. We're gonna, we're gonna tap into that hidden talent. Yeah. It was a waste. 
It was good. It was good thing. It was good for people to make content with, I guess. It was a joke though that anyone thought that he was going to go anywhere and be anything with this team. We are we have such a problem at the tackle position right now, but we still released him. <laughs> we have tackled the garbage right now. We we released him. That's that's what a, that's what a talent he turned out to be. <laughs> I just love people though. Oh my god, let's build up top. Let's build up this guy to add nausea because of the fact that he, we got nothing else to talk about. But, I mean, you also have Kyle Rudolph coming up saying that Daniel Jones was the best quarterback he's ever played with. Is that actually what he said? Someone sent that to me. What actually he says, absolutely since day one, Daniel Jones is the best quarterback I've ever played. But, well, you're an idiot, too. You're also washed up. You're also washed up, Kyle. So I, I, I take no solace in, in anything that you say. But, like I said, it's an interesting, it's an interesting proposition. It's an interesting dichotomy. If the Giants go after Harbaugh like I wanted them to, they're definitely going to go with a new quarterback, to go with a new system. Everything's going to be brand new, but it's going to have to be a complete wipe of the slate in Giant land, and I don't see that happening. He would have The Giants would have to give up player control to Harbaugh. I said this two weeks ago when I did my Harbaugh video. Go back and watch it. That's what I love about YouTube. People are always like, well, you're not always right. Well, I'm right a lot. I'm right a lot. If you want to watch it, go back and watch it because <laughs> I don't delete anything ever. Had a great stream yesterday. I want to thank Mr. Authentic for stopping by. If you don't know the channel Authentic in the Beard, they do giant stuff. They do NFC East stuff. Came into the stream yesterday. It was fun. It was a good time. Also, I want to thank Dom, of course, the Dahmer. We're going to be doing the Tim and Dom show every Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, even after the season ends, because it's a lot of fun. Of course, we talk everything Giants. We talk everything UK. We talk, we, we just talk it all. So hopefully everyone will we'll set that up as a weekly show so everyone can jump in and see us. We'll be talking about the offseason. We'll be talking about the draft. We'll be talking about the, all the other fun stuff. But you know what, guys? It's just, it's, this season is mercifully coming to an end. We, we've reached the pinnacle of, we've reached the pinnacle not only of stupidity, but of lack of excellence. We are now, we are now, we are now hanging our hopes that basically Jim Harbaugh came out and said, I could be possibly lured. Back into the NFL. He would take up a lot of money. It would take a lot of control. And like I said, I don't think the Giants are willing to do that. And again, this is Tim with the Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you could like, you can subscribe. And that'd be awesome.